important about this case is that um, an innocent person has been accused of a felony and she's looking at seven years in jail. My name is Martin Stoller. I'm a lawyer in New York City. I am a primarily a criminal defense lawyer. Um, and I was involved as a lawyer in representing a large number of the people who were arrested during the course of the Occupy Wall Street protests and demonstrations. Um, one of those people that was arrested during that period of time was Cecily McMillan. And I was originally not on her case. Um, the attorney who was on her case was somebody who was a younger lawyer who I was mentoring along the way. She got a job um, at a firm where she could no longer handle Cecily's case and I agreed to take it over. Cecily has been indicted for the felony of assaulting a police officer. The allegation is that Cecily struck a police officer in the area right below his eye on his cheekbone um, with her elbow. Um, the circumstances under which the blow was struck, and there's no question that she hit him with her elbow, are what constitutes the contents of the trial. She's accused of intentionally assaulting the police officer in order to prevent him from performing his duties. Um, there is video that shows that she actually whacked the police officer with her right elbow as her elbow came up and she hit him in the face. So there's no question that she hit him. The question is how come and why she hit him and did she know she, he was a police officer? Our position is that Cecily was in the park, Zuccotti Park, on St. Patrick's Day, not there as a protester that night, but there to basically party for St. Patrick's Day. Um, when the police started coming in to clear the park out around midnight, Cecily, following the police direction, started to leave the park. As she was leaving the park, she felt somebody behind her grab her right breast and lift her up, at which point she startled. She reacted and said, whoa, what is this? And that is apparently when her elbow came up and hit the person behind her who was grabbing her. From that point on, she goes down to the ground and she falls down to the ground. And that's about all she remembers until she wakes up in the hospital some hours later and her body is completely bruised. Her back is bruised, her legs are bruised, her face is bruised, her head is bruised. And she really has no idea how that happened. Um, but what we do have documented because Cecily went and got a physical. Um, she went to a doctor a couple of days later and um, the doctor was concerned about documenting the injuries that she had. And we have a, po a photograph that the doctor took of Cecily's, of bruises on Cecily's right breast, um, indicating that is where she was grabbed rather violently by somebody who was behind her. When you look at the video, it turns out the person who was behind her was the police officer who got hit in the eye. Um, so the bottom line is it's a terrible accident that she was grabbed. I don't know why the police officer grabbed her on the breast, but that's why uh, what he did. And she reacted. She startled. She threw her hands up in the air and with no knowledge that it was a cop who had grabbed her, and no intent to hit anybody. She was just startled saying, look, what are you doing grabbing my boob? Um, that doesn't constitute a crime as far as we're concerned. And uh, presumably as far as the jury is concerned, if we can prove that to the jury, and I think we will be able to do that, um, she will be acquitted of the crime of assaulting a police officer. Well, the trial hasn't really started yet. Not yet. What we had on... Uh, uh, Monday was a pretrial hearing on the admissibility of a statement that she made in the hospital that was overheard by the police officer. Uh, we had a whole hearing about the circumstances under which that statement or a series of statements were made. Um, 
The end result of the hearing is that the judge found that if the prosecution wants to use the statements, they are admissible. And the judge was right in finding that. In fact, we agreed with her that the circumstances under which those statements were made were not unconstitutional by any stretch of the imagination. After we finished the hearing, the district attorney said, okay, I'm not going to use the statements. So we wasted an entire afternoon at a hearing about something the DA is not going to offer into evidence. We now move on to the actual trial itself. And that will start this week with jury selection, where we have to select a jury of 12 people with a couple of alternates. And it will be up to them to make a determination as to whether or not the prosecution has proved beyond a reasonable doubt that Cecily intentionally assaulted a police officer with the intent to interfere with his ability to perform his duties. Um, we fully expect the jury to say not guilty. She was, she met, she was out, uh, you know, pub crawling with a, a friend from out of town. Um, they met another friend down at Zuccotti and they were going to go to some of the Irish pubs in the Wall Street area. That was the intention. Um, when the, uh, they decided to clear the park and Cecily, not wanting to get arrested, but wanting to go party till four in the morning, decided to clear the park like she had been directed to by the cop who she talked to. That's when she gets grabbed. What happens after she gets grabbed is only known to us by virtue of video that other people have taken. And it is very difficult to identify the officers who on the video appear to assault Cecily and retaliate against her for hitting a police officer. Um, that is the, our best guess as to how she got the bruises all over her body, on her back and on her head. Uh, because when the cop pulled her up, she fell forward onto her face. That does not account for bruises on her back. Um, so we, our assumption is that it was police officers who delivered the blows that resulted in the bruises um, both on her back and on her sides and on her head. Uh, she doesn't have any memory, any recollection of this whatsoever. The only evidence we have are the videos and no police officer has been prosecuted or disciplined for doing this. I've been a lawyer doing this kind of work for more than 40 years. Um, the way that Cecily got beat up is right up there among the top cases that I've ever handled of somebody being injured as a result of an arrest. Um, she's still alive, which is a good thing. She's still functioning, which is a good thing. That the bruises were soft tissue injuries and don't leave any physical marks is fine. Traumatized, um, Cecily probably suffers from or at least did suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder from uh, going through this experience. Um, it definitely affected her ability to be the student that she is, to be able to hold the jobs that she had. Um, but she's struggling through and doing pretty well. Um, the, uh, the fact that the police retaliated against somebody who they think assaulted one of theirs is not so unusual. Um, unfortunately, in my experience, when you assault a police officer or when the police believe that you have assaulted them, they retaliate. Um, that appears to be what has happened here, but that's not the subject of this trial. The subject of this trial is whether or not Cecily committed a crime. The answer is no. What is important about this case is that um, an innocent person has been accused of a felony and she's looking at seven years in jail um, based on an accusation of an innocent person who was out there not doing anything except trying to party. Um, it was St. Patrick's Day, and being a Macmillan, that's what Cecily was doing on that particular day. She was not protesting. She wasn't looking for a confrontation with the police. Um, in fact, Cecily has tremendous respect for the uniformed services. Um, the union job, as a, a, the job that she has as a, um, a union organizer, covers some of the uniformed services, and she treats all of those folks with respect and dignity, and they expect her to be, uh, she expects them to treat her the same way. Um, it's really an unfortunate set of circumstances under which an activist, and she was involved with Occupy Wall Street from the beginning, um, from long before 
the uh, uh, the encampment was set up in Zuccotti Park when uh, OWS was just beginning in Tompkins Square Park in New York. Cecily was part of the discussion and part of the General Assemblies that were planning all of the Occupy Wall Street activities that took place. So she was definitely an activist. She was a nonviolent activist. She's known in the community as a nonviolent person. She was pushing nonviolent resolutions on the General Assembly on every working group that she was ever involved with during her entire involvement in Occupy Wall Street. So for her <coughs> to be accused of committing some kind of a violent crime is really a far stretch from who the person really is. More than just uh, criminal justice, but I wanted to discuss just justice and then criminality and who are the real criminals and who really needs justice and what kind of justice we really need. Cop just pushed me and I pushed him back. 